Hannah Rothschild. Uh, we are delighted uh, that you're going to come to Hong Kong for the Hong Kong Book Fair. Uh, is it your first visit to Hong Kong? Yeah, I've been trying to get there for, well, I'm not going to say how many years, but a long time. So. But, I mean, your, your family has had long association with Hong Kong. I mean, I remember when I was young, um, I remember the great house of N.M. Rothschild, the banking family. You are a very interesting specimen for me, as far as the book fair is concerned, because um, uh, without making any suggestion about your own age, you have come to being a novelist quite late um, in your life. It's almost my dotage, I would say. <laughs> and I'm sure that a lot of people in Hong Kong mm. um, will be inspired by the fact that they might still have time in which to emerge as a, as, as a novelist. So, you know, some of the things that um, they might be asking you is, how did you come to writing a first novel so late in life? Now, have you always been wanting to write a novel and then it's just put put off and yeah, no, indefinitely I, yeah. or I what? think I wanted from a very early age to write a novel. I think lots of people do want to write novels and I actually started this one about 20 years ago but it was so bad it went into a drawer <laughs> <laughs> and then um, about three years ago I suddenly thought you know everyone says one day I'll do it one day I'll do it and for some bizarre reason I woke up one morning I thought today is one day Yes. And so I started. But I think I think what my the great lesson that you, perhaps if anyone wants to learn a lesson from me is it's never too late to do anything. It's never too late to well, do anything. Well, almost anything. But in fact, uh, two years before you had written a, a first book, which was a biography of one of your um, relations. Yes, my great aunt. I, I wrote a book about my great aunt who ran off with the jazz musician Felonious Monk in the 1950s in America at a time when it was actually illegal for for um, blacks and whites to marry and intermarry. So she caused an incredible scandal. She was a rebel. She was a proper rebel, yeah. Away, I mean, I always, I'm a kind of tiny baby rebel. She was a kind of major full-blown rebel. <laughs> yes, yeah. and you admire that. Hugely, I don't have the guts to be quite, the, quite so daring. And maybe it's more difficult today to be that daring. But, but she was, uh, uh, Nico was her yes, name, Yes, yes, so she was, she was born yeah. at the kind of, in the, when the Rothschilds were really, you know, at their kind of height. Yeah. So at the turn of, of, of the century, I, I, you know, in, in 1913. And when they lived, you know, with hot and cold running staff, it was really properly, properly grown. But her interest was also exceptional, not following the classical mode. Yeah. But she was a patron of jazz, which That's at right. the time... Was, was the new music. Absolutely. Well, not only that, but of course, you know, Rothschild women were only supposed to, you know, get married and have babies. So you weren't supposed to have interests outside. You know? but, but you got married and had babies. Well, I did, but I mean, I, I did other things too. But she did, you know, she fell in love with this music, as you say, which was very, very new, very cutting edge, yeah. which people didn't really understand. But I mean, did that spur you on to writing your novel? Because... I suspect that once you've started writing and you complete a book, that gives you a lot more confidence. It, absolutely and, uh, right. Yes. Yeah. And so very soon afterward, you decided that this was yeah. the novel that, that, that you want yes. to write. Yes, I think, I think it gave me confidence, but also, um, it get, in a way, when I looked at her and she just, she just followed her heart and she said, oh, to hell with the consequences, to hell with other people think, I'm going to do what I want. And I suppose that I felt, well, actually, you know, the thing I've always wanted to do is write a novel. So she inspired me to try and do the unthinkable. So now that you've got a biography yeah. and a novel, um, what is your next aspiration as far as the print is concerned? Well, I'm going to write another book about, um, which is kind of Downton Abbey-ish, 50 years on. So it's what happens when the family loses all their money and all they cling on to is the house. Yes. So it's going to be a very dilapidated house. Yes, it's like that series where people go and advise. Um, literally, uh, heaven, literally, Yes, <laughs> uh, to advise how to get the cash flow. How going to get again. the cash, exactly. Yes, the cash so, flow yes. again. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, another novel uh, under that's, your that's belt. That's something which I'm thinking, which I'm which I'm working on at the moment. Uh, yes, yeah. I know. But so, actually, maybe Hong Kong, you see, maybe I'll come to Hong Kong and I will think of something completely different. Yes, you, perhaps a, a billionaire who will then come to the heart of Hart, uh, Hampshire or whatever it yes, is. Yes, and to, then save the house. Uh, yes, and save actually, the house. that is a brilliant idea. Well, <laughs> you, you better start looking at the Chinese men and women who might be able to well, do could, that. Maybe you would introduce me to a few. Yes. Well, <laughs> anyway, um, you're coming to the book fair. We've got our open forum and uh, we've got two other people, uh, two other authors, Simon Winchester and Wilbur uh, Smith. 
and I hope that you enjoy not only answering the question, but uh, being entertained by some of the questions. And I, I know a lot of people will start asking you questions uh, about writing, uh, about the discipline of writing and so forth. Before I end, mm -hmm. what sort of conception do you have about Hong Kong? About Hong Kong? Yes. Well, you see, I, it's funny because I know a bit about it from the history of Hong Kong. So, so part of my thoughts about Hong Kong are kind of rooted in the kind of um, in the Opium Wars. Yeah. So I can imagine great frigates sailing in in full sail, and I can imagine with Henry the British Keswick in their on the deck. <laughs> exactly. And then, of course, I think about you with endless cigars and you know, and Kate Moss, you know, looking incredibly glamorous. So my kind of ideas about Hong Kong are slightly skewed. Well, I'm afraid that you will find that there are a lot more Chinese there. I mean, nowadays... I'm not afraid of that. Are you afraid of that? Well, <laughs> we're only a population of 7 million, but 50 million mainlanders come through Hong Kong. But they also will be, uh, uh, will be teeming at the, the book fair, and they will be thirsting for books in Chinese and English, because English is a very popular language in China. About 300 million uh, people are learning English or, or can speak a uh, kind of English. So um, it's going to be fascinating uh, for them uh, to catch a glimpse of your view of I think your novel is called The Improbability of, of Love. Love. Exactly. No, no, listen, I have to be completely honest with you, is that when you invited me to come to this festival, I think you know, I think you saw me, I did a little jig of excitement. And um, and that dance of excitement has got bigger and bigger over the last few months. Well, I hope that uh, you won't be disappointed. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Hannah Rothschild, we in Hong Kong much look forward to seeing you. And thank you for agreeing to come out. Thank you very much. Thank you.